With serene environs and a peaceful ambience, Teke Gramam offers a refreshing perspective. It is indeed a village dotted with rivers and untouched by means of traditions that were passed from one generation to the other. The soul of the village lies in the core of four temples which keep them bonded together. Like a temple that opens its doors, just as the Lord opens his eyes upon his humankind, Teke Gramam is an apt example of an abundantly blessed land. Geographically located about 15 kilometers south, away from Palakkad town, the legend has it that it was about 450 years ago that Sri Tunjati Ramanujan arrived at this village on the northern bank of a beautiful river. It was a tributary of Bharadapura, where a scenic village on its shores still retained an old world charm. After attaining a fulfilled mind and an enlightened conscience, the primal poet of Malayalam owed it to the divinity of the river and hereafter the river was called by the name Shoganashini. He saw Teke Gramam as an ideal place to settle and give vent to his creative impulses. He spent his final days here and out of his oceanic kindness to all devotees translated ancient epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata and Bhagavata in simple kilipata form in Malayalam for the benefit of those Pamara devotees who had no knowledge of Sanskrit and had to depend on someone to get them explained. Hence, he led a life where the Gurumaram was designated for this purpose. Later on, upon the guidance of one of his disciples, Sri Surya Narayana Irtachan, twelve houses were built facing each other, which later came to be known as the Double Street. These houses were then gifted to twelve Brahmin families who were well versed in Veda Shastra from Tanjaur. Eventually, the temples of Lord Rama and Lord Shiva were built so as to bless the village and diminish the evil. Even today, inside the Gurumadam, a stylus, a Sri Chakra and a pair of wooden slippers used by the poet are kept for public viewing along with some old manuscripts that also has a library of rare books. Teke Gramam has always been a place synonymous to a self-sufficient village which was an isolated part of the Kochi kingdom and hence had advantages of its own like banks, post offices and other facilities of a township. But the glorious era of the settlement started to deteriorate slowly after the Land Reform Act of 1960 was introduced. Soon a population that depended on agriculture as a primary option for livelihood had to resort to other means like migrating to other cities in search of better jobs and this catalyzed the continuous migration of its residents thus closing many doors of the village. From not just the looks of it but in every minuscule detail that can be perceived, Teke Grama manages to encapsulate a niche for every linguistic community that lives in there. So the culture that one observes here is of a melange of many ethnicities. From Tulu, Telugu Brahmins, to the Kannadigas and the most prominent Tamil Mudaliyars, Chettiyars and the authentic Palakkad Putters, Teke Gramam and the whole of Chittur showcases a variety of linguistic secularism. The streets of Teke Gramam not only highlight the graceful beauty in its layout but also are a great example of functionality. Initially the central double street with the temple of Lord Rama as its focal point earns most recognition owing to the legacy it bears. Consequently, the single streets built behind each of the double street and the Navagraha street of nine houses who connect themselves to the banks of the river underline the fact that with the passage of time, the original families had multiplied and also persuaded their related families to shift here for a comfortable life. The planning of Agraharams cased a linear pattern where the temples formed as the main focal point. The planning and architecture of these housing patterns had evolved considering 
various parameters like the local climatic conditions, availability of local building materials, social status and the nobility of the household, skilled workmanship, etc. The rows of houses are either single or double storey with traditionally pitched roofs using timber joineries which strike a significant profile against the sky. The streets were an integral extension of the living space. The village had closely knitted houses sharing a common wall and had a long veranda along the front portion called Tinne. The superstructure was made out of timber and the roofing tiles have been updated with glass tiles to let in light. The clock starts ticking as early as 5 in the morning as the tradition of washing the thinna for the kolam has to be done before the sunrise. Being a temple town goes without saying that most of the activities of the senior crowd that happen occur in accordance with the temple's routine. Just as the morning sun starts kicking in, the kids go to school and adults go to work. As if it were all pre-scheduled, the milkman nor his customers never miss their routine. And the same goes with all peddlers who bring the flowers and vegetables. Once the homemakers are done with their chores and as the noon sets in, the street turns a little less busier and they all socialize within their circle. Consequently, when the sky turns paler, the kids come to cherish their most awaited playtime. Whilst the men gather around the most prominent banyan trees to discuss their share of societal concerns. Soon, the women of the household resume from their respective breaks and start the preparations for the evening prayer. On some rare but not so rare occasions, even women gather amidst here during the eve. When the dusk has finally marked its arrival, the temple is lit with diyas for the Deepa Aradhana. And as a matter of fact, not just the temple, but even the houses seem to spread the light in their own ways. As the night sets in, the land of Tekegramam falls into deep slumber, all to wake in just a matter of hours. The lamps of a temple town shine brighter during its festive season, and those of Tekegramam are no less than a festive treat. All around the year, right from Shivaratri in February till Ashtami in November, the village and its temple celebrate every festival upholding its values as an integrated community. Amongst of them all, the festival that is hosted as its own, Tere, the chariot procession is definitely a sight to behold. The Tere is beyond just a festival to look up to. For more than a century, it has been one of the reasons for the villagers to come back home, to engage not just in oneself but collectively in rituals and communal gatherings. Apart from its festivities, Teke Gramam also observes the Konkan Pada as a local holiday near the Chiturkau. In the words of conservationist S. Gurvairapan, 
The village is crying for attention despite its rich legacy. But the land of Tekegramam has never been a part of the rat race of globalization. Perhaps one of the reasons why it retains its almost untouched character. Thus, it ought to be a land that embodies the vision of Ertachan, for which it would be fitting that we continue to resurrect only what is lost and reinforce wherever needed.